Hey guys, I'm a few minutes early for our creative hour. If you guys are not aware of what's going on, check out the last two videos and you'll understand what we're doing. But I'm going to do uh, really quick in case this is someone's first time coming on. I'm not sure who's going to be able to make the live or catch the replay. Um, I'm about to go, but I wanted to come on a few minutes early before I left and um, show you guys some pieces from my boutique because in my creative hour today, I want to um, write out some new names for my new items that I'm going to be getting. But I want to show you guys what I have left in my inventory. I'm clearing this to get new inventory. It'll just be a couple seconds. And then I'm also going to focus on my book, my third book. I have to um, complete that or whatever. So our creative hour, guys, basically the purpose for the creative hour. Um, and don't worry, I'm a few minutes early because I know I told you guys 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Tonight, um, I'm going to do morning and evening service. We did our morning walk this morning. But basically, like our creative hour is going to be where you need to do a task or you need to complete something. And it's kind of hard for you to do it. You like It's hard for you to be disciplined to do it when it's just you. We take this time, whether it's 20 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour or whatever. I'm going to try not to go past an hour, even if it's 30 minutes. And we just take this time and we do whatever God has been telling us to do. It could be you working on your business, working on your ministry, doing homework. It could be you spending time with your kids. It could be you taking time to rest and relax. It could be you, um, you know, cleaning up your house. It could be you working on your music, working on your movie, working on your book, working on your stuff. Whatever it is, it, it don't even have to be anything that I just mentioned. Whatever it is, it's just um, whatever the Lord told you to do. So we're going to spend time doing that. Um, and I'm not going to stay in the house I'm going to go out because I think I'm going to think better once I'm out because I came here today, did what I needed to do. And um, hold on, guys. I'm trying to take this stuff out the bag. But yeah, um, that's the purpose of our creative hour. Uh, just coming together, keeping one another accountable with um, what God has told us that we need to do. Amen. So that's the purpose of the creative hour. Hi, Cher. Good evening. <laughs> I'm a few minutes early. I just was saying that I'm a few minutes early, but I just wanted to come on a few minutes before I go out because I'm going to go work on my book. Like I was telling you, like while I'm working on the book, I know you guys will be working on other things, but I just wanted to show some pieces that I had from my boutique because usually I just post my website in the, the description box or something. But today, like after my reading time, God was like, no, do it in your creative hour because in my creative hour, I'm going to be working on the book, like closing out one scene of the chapter that I'm on and um, like new um, working on like new um, boutique names, not boutique names, new um, item pieces names for my boutique. So what are you going to be doing, uh, Miss Cheryl, for your creative hour today? Because I'm going to try to do like I'm going to try to do it more once I move, you know, like we'll have music in the background cooking. OK, nice. Miss Cheryl said she's going to be cooking, guys. So I'm going to be like, once I move, we're going to have like music in the background. Hi, Dee Dee. How you doing, sis? God bless you. What are you doing for your creative hour today? But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start like, once I move, we're going to have like peaceful music in the background. Like we're doing our own thing, but we're still doing it together, you know. So today's a little different because it's kind of like the beginning of it. But let me show y'all. So this is a, um, this is like a little fanny pack. That's a little fanny pack I have. I'm trying to show you guys. Give me a second because I'm about to get out of here. I just wanted to come on a few minutes early so that I'm able to do this. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Didi, I'm doing good. This is like a little rumper. I don't know if y'all can see it. Just like a little gold rumper. It got like gold on the back. And um, hold on, guys. That's like a little romper piece. This is like a little shirt. I don't know if I really want to take them out the bag, but I will just to show y'all. Because I'm going to be working on new item pieces. This is, um, hold on, guys. So this is um a shirt. I don't know if y'all can see it, but that's a shirt. Um, so a few more, and then I'm going to stop showing this in like five minutes this is another little shirt I'm sorry, this is another little shirt i don't know if you see it 
like a little shirt and then the back is like um the back is like this i'm just showing it really quick though yeah you can see it's like a little skirt a little skirt it's really cute too and it's comfortable this is um these are like some little pants hi to the third person that came on i'm sorry i can't see who it is but god bless you what are you what are you guys doing in y'all creative hour i know miss cheryl said she's gonna be cooking what y'all doing in y'all creative hour that's some little some pants they long i'm trying to show them quickly so i can uh go so i can start working on the chapter of the book and these are some more little pants or whatever i have like little different stuff i have gifts for him and her you know i have like my business service i have a lot of stuff i do like two years actually guys what's so funny is i had actually created this youtube channel for my boutique stuff and the lord had tricked me and start doing the ministry stuff with the youtube so but i'm grateful i love it uh these are some little pants i don't know if y'all could see it really good but these are some little pants or whatever and, um, this is like a little um you could put this like under like a little outfit like a little shirt this right here i show these things all the time on my instagram where i promoted a lot on my instagram and i got some youtube videos of my stuff i had made a playlist this morning guys of um i had made a playlist this morning of all the videos that i've been doing like the last almost two years so it's easier for people that want to sort and i'm gonna add this to its own playlist but yeah these are some shoes i don't know if y'all can see some heels I had a lot of other stuff, but a lot of that stuff is gone. Like it's not available in stock anymore. But these are what I have left. This is like a little dress. It's like a leather, gray leather dress. And this is another little dress. If you guys have had sent something in the messages, I can't see it. I can see it, but it's kind of like loading slow. It could be because I'm in the room. I usually don't record in here. I usually record outside or in my car. It's like another little night dress or something. Did you remember to add me to your distro list? Oh, Miss Cheryl, I um I didn't get the email from you. Were you able to email me? But if you want, you can leave your um email in the chat. And what I'll do is before we close out, I'm going to write it down. And I'll send you uh, all the messages from last week from uh, the list and the one from this morning. I'll send it to you tonight. So you could leave it in the chat if you want. Or you could just email me as lovecare243 at yahoo.com, whichever you prefer. So this is like another little dress. Guys, I love my boutique, my store. It's like my baby. Like my books are like my baby. And I know one day I'm going to look back on these videos and be so glad that I, you know, pressed in and believe God for things that he showed me. Sorry, guys. This is another little dress. I love this little dress. It's like a little cocktail dress, too. I don't know if y'all can see. Probably should have had the hangers on. But this is like another one. Y'all don't mind my room. I just kind of got up. I didn't fold my cover yet. Kind of like a neat freak, but. I have wanted to get on and do this because once I come back, I'm getting back in the bed to um do my homework. That's another part of the dress. Um, and I was thinking too, um, we're gonna have like a ladies' night. I don't know when, sometime before the end of the year. This is another little dress I have, y'all. This is a cute cocktail dress. And I had a sale yesterday, like seven dollars for everything gift bag sets i had a, a deal on those because i do like gift bag sets too for men and women and like this dress right here it was seven dollars yesterday like all this stuff i'm showing y'all was seven dollars i'll be having like a lot of good deals and stuff on instagram and stuff that's it for the clothes i have like little jewelry and stuff i'm not gonna take it out but i got like little chokers 
little earrings and stuff. I don't feel like taking them out, but you can go on the website and see if you want to buy it. I have like faith cards that I do. Like different faith cards, like custom faith cards. I'm about to get out of here. And then I have like bottles. I have different ones. I'm not going to show y'all all of them. But I got a few different ones. This is one of them. Like what I did was I just took like wine bottles and different bottles. And God had downloaded to me to do like a, um, like customize them, like what, pictures and like a magazine and stuff. And I made like, I think I made like over 50 to 60 bottles. This is another one. A lot of them are sold. A lot of them are gone. This is another one. It's like different ones. Like you could use it. Um, if you want to put flowers in it, if you want to put money in it to save, you could roll it. You could just be creative. Like you could use them as centerpieces or whatever you want. And then let me show y'all my gift bag sets and I'm going to go. Like this is a gift bag set I have. Can y'all see me? Okay. That's a little gift bag set. Like it comes with a cream. I make um, custom body creams. That one comes with a notebook, a coffee mug, candy, a candle, and a, uh, a wine glass. That's one of them. And I'm talking with y'all early so y'all could see. Because like when I start doing my book, I'm going to be a little quiet. <laughs> so I'm trying to engage with you guys while we're doing a live. Um, this one is kind of the same thing. It's just a different color. It has like a little... Um, Hi, Adora. How you doing? Adora, what are you doing for your um creative hour today? And you guys that's on here too, what are y'all doing for y'all creative hour today? Mine's I'm doing. Um, that's good, Adora. Mine's I'm, I told y'all I'm going to work on the book and I'm going to work on some new names. Um, God told me to write some new names for the new inventory. Thank you, Dee Dee. I appreciate it. I'll be trying, girl. God is so good. This is one that goes with that. Like it comes with a, uh, a coffee mug. It comes with um, a wine glass. It comes with a candle. And it comes with my uh, custom made cream. Like these. Like these were on sale yesterday that I'm showing you. Because I have small, medium, large, extra large. And like these are large. They're $15. Like yesterday they were like $10. No, today. Today I'm having a sale. I think the sale expires at 5 p.m. But yeah, this is another one I have. This has a, a candle. Um, a little cream in here that I made, uh, some soap, a loafer, some chocolate, and a little notebook in a pan. And this one is $10. Yeah, they're different prices. Um, hold on, y'all. As soon as I start subscribing and get where I need to go, I'm just going to start picking out my iPad and stuff. But yeah, this is another one. This is another set. I have like a loafer. And it has um it has like a little notebook. It has the cream, it has the um, wine. This one comes with a coffee mug, it has a candle, soap, the notebook, the cream, and a little face mask. I gotta order I fix that a little bit. And um this is a small one. This is a small one. This is like seven dollars. It just comes with like a little candle, a loafer, and um the cream and some candy the small ones come like that there's a two small ones there's a few of them guys that one like that too and, um, and then this is another one that i have this is the last one that i'm gonna stop showing y'all the stuff that i have left for the boutique hold on let me put that in one second because i got a um so this is another one guys that I have this little thing just keep on coming on sorry y'all I'm sorry okay this is another one this is also like another little loafer and it's like this little bath salt stuff soap a uh, little thing for your eyes a wine glass coffee mug I could get all that and stuff. So that's it what I have for the boutique. And like I'm gonna start back um customizing um like little dresses. I gotta get back to doing scarf dresses. 
Oh, Adora said she's going to work on her writing. That's good, Adora. So Miss Cheryl is working on her cooking. Adora's working on her writing. Dee Dee and the other third person, what are y'all going to be working on? Are y'all creative for this creative hour today? So, yeah, um, that's what I have. And I'm going to get some new stuff. I'm trying to, uh, you know. So. But, yep, guys. So, oh, I was saying, guys, um, I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, I was saying, guys, and y'all don't mind my eyelashes because I didn't have time to, like, really fix them this morning. And I kind of didn't care because I had wanted to do that walk. And I had kind of, you know, did what I needed to do today. So, today is one of those days. Y'all don't mind my room. Today is, like, one of those days where I'm just like, girl, please, I'll fix that lash tomorrow. So, Yeah. Oh, guys, I was saying um, really quick, because I'm about to go in my car. Didi said she have no idea. That's okay, Didi. You can just um, be here with us. We're just grateful that you're here. That's no problem. So, yeah, guys, I was saying we should have, like, a little girls' night. Like, um, when I move, like, when I move in my place, we can have, like, a girls' night where we do our nails and we, like, like pamper ourselves. Even though we have to polish our own nails and stuff, like, we just, you know, pamper ourselves and, um, you know, can y'all see me? I'm sorry. I'm trying to put this stuff back in the bag. I just wanted to show y'all some of the stuff that I had. And I didn't show you guys everything, but I showed you guys most of the stuff. But, yeah, like, we can have, uh, where we just have, like, a little girls' night. We pamper ourselves. We do facials. We can probably have, like, little snacks or, you know, cook together. And do little things and like watch a movie or something and just even if we do like a book club, God is showing me a lot of different ways to be more creative with this channel. Like, cause you guys know I'm big on prayer. We do Bible study, we study the Bible, we pray and stuff like that. But it's like these last uh couple of days, like ever since the prayer call download, he's been showing me different ways to get more creative with the channel, which is the channel has a lot of good content, rich content, but I guess according to, um, you know, the new season that I'm going in, it's like he's giving me different downloads. And he's been doing that a lot with me, too, was in my business. So I'm very grateful for that, you know. I'm just putting this stuff back, guys. And then I'm going to go get my iPad and start working on my stuff. I'm going to drive to this little spot that I normally drive to. Because once I'm done typing, I can go get me some dinner tonight. I don't feel like cooking. And y'all don't mind me with this scarf. Whenever y'all see this little pink scarf, that means I'm very comfortable. And I'm in my element and I'm in a relaxed state. So, it's all good. <laughs> Guys, November will be here in a few days. And then it'll be December. And then we'll be in 2019 on the Gregorian calendar. What do y'all think about that? Didn't this year go by so fast? It seems like, it seems like to me... Like, it'll be Friday, and then before you blink, it'll be Friday again. Like, it seems like this year has been going fast, and I also feel like God has been quickening things because he's returning at an hour that we don't expect. And I also feel like he's quickening things for his people to let us know that we're not going to be suffering in vain. You know, that he got blessings for us, that he, you know, he is accelerating us into our blessings and into our promises. Like, you know, he's manifesting his promises to us, guys. So it's just like, that's a blessing. That's amazing. What do you guys think about the girls' night? Like, we're going to do that, like, before the year is out. Like, we're going to do a girls' night and just be on the live doing, like, a little girls' pampering thing. Adora said, I ha I'm scared that time is going by so fast and I haven't seen my real mate yet. Kind of worries me, honestly. Girls' night sounds cute. Okay, nice. Adora, don't be afraid. The Lord is going to bless you with your real mate. He may even do that at a time that you don't even expect because you've been so faithful. And if God promises to you, he's going to fulfill it and perform it. I have those times too, like in my situation. But I know God is going to do it. Uh, uh, Didi, he's going to do it for you too, Didi. Y'all just stay faithful. He's going to do it. Like my situation with my person that I'm with, I've been with them now for about almost two years. 
And um, we were together before when I was younger and he was younger. And then like we had went our separate ways. And uh, then we got back together a little bit, kind of. And I wish I had kind of stayed with him. And it's like the Lord had blessed me back with him at a time that I didn't expect. But, like, he had never left my mind. He had never, like, I never stopped loving him after all that I had been through. Even, like, after I had my son and stuff. And God brought it back again. So, and it's going to be two years in March. So, I just want to encourage you guys to... Yes, and I'm so glad because he's the only person that I never ended on a bad note with. He's the only person that I never really stopped loving, you know, and I always like, like I wanted him to be my first. I wanted to like marry him even when I was like 14, like, even though that's kind of like people like that's puppy love, but I knew like that I've never stopped loving him. Like even as the years passed by, like I always thought about him and I had never like, it's like I just kind of buried how I felt about him. But I never stopped loving him. And it was so weird the way that we had reconnected. And I know it was nobody but God. So it's going to be like two years. So I'm just giving y'all some encouragement to not give up. Whatever the Lord shows you is going to happen, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Because I'm 29. And that's when we were 14. Then again at 17. For 10 years, me and him lived in the same city. We did not see each other. We never ended on a bad note. We just didn't see each other. We didn't talk to each other in like for 10 whole years. And then God brought it back around right on time. And I'm telling you, it's like we didn't even miss timing. Like we go through different things and stuff, but God brought it back again. And March is going to be two whole years. That's why I'm telling y'all, it seems like it's so fast. So it's like, don't, you know, give up. Thank you, Didi. Thank you, Adora. Yeah, God will bless you when you promise a reunion because I'm telling y'all, I had never stopped loving him. And I had always wished, like, he was the, he was the, he was the person that, like, I, I had always wished that I could be back with. You know, because I was the type of girl, like, a lot of people wanted to be with me. And I wasn't wanting to be with everybody. You know, and, like, when I was younger, I wasn't, like, as mature as I am now as far as relationship. But, like... Well, him, it just was so different, and I just see so many good things with us. So I'm just encouraging you guys. God can do it. I'm, I'm telling you because he did it for me, and he's still doing it. So he can do it, you know? Nothing is impossible. Because I'm telling you, I never thought that. See how this little dress just fell? I never thought that me and him would get back together. I always wanted us to. And we did. And like everything that I was praying to God about that I wanted in a spouse or a man, it's like he came. And like we had to start over. Like it's still kind of, we're still going through certain processes right now. It's not perfect, but I love him. Grateful for the friendship, the relationship. I'm just grateful for it all because I genuinely love him. And I, as you guys notice, I do not come on here and talk about my relationships with y'all personally, but I do want to end <laughs> encourage you guys and i feel like god is telling me to be more open as well like ever since saturday he's been having me be a lot more open than normal and that's okay because that's what this channel is for but y'all i put everything back in the bag and i'm about to get in my car so i can go start working on the chapter that i gotta close out sometimes i feel like god does it for so many people and i can't wrap my head around him doing it for me because i waited for this bunch for so long thank you for sharing this encouraging you're welcome adora i had kind of felt like that too because like the people that i was with before him well after him when we were younger i was like why am i going through all this turmoil in hell and i feel like god kind of sent it as a rescue too because like the relationship that i was in before was very abusive it was very toxic. Um, that's the one I was telling y'all I had all those miscarriages from. And, like, it just, it wasn't going anywhere. And I thought that me and that person was going to be married. Like, we had even sat down, like, for marriage counseling and everything. And it just, it wasn't God's will. Like, I was forcing it. And we just had went through a lot. And I felt like when God sent back my ex at a time where I didn't expect, but that I needed it. Because let me tell y'all what happened. What happened was... He didn't just send back my ex after my other ex. What happened was when I had surrendered that toxic relationship to the Lord, 
And I had took time out to spend time in God and seeking after him and not jumping in a relationship and taking time to heal and do what the Lord was telling me to do, like focus on ministry. That's during the time like I really was um, being serious with this YouTube channel, focusing on like my goals, starting up this business, like finally starting it up. And then after a while, God brought it what he needed to bring. And like even during the time, like these last two years, God has still been having me focus in on him. You know, keeping him first, focusing on my business, build like focusing on this ministry, focusing on the things that matter and keeping him first. Because, you know, like today in my Bible study time, I, I was just reading scriptures that I was supposed to read and I finally had crossed them off and I read them. And uh, Proverbs 16, 3 has spoke, like um, stood out to me because it was like, um, you know, when you commit your plans to the Lord, you know, he's going to prosper. He's going to make your plans succeed. But He's going to make your plan succeed when you commit your way to him, when you seek him, you know, and it also had took me, oh, this is my little open sign, y'all. It also had took me to, um, um, Matthew six thirty three. you know, when you seek God and you put his kingdom above all else, he's going to, um, he's going to make sure that you have all that you need. You know, when you seek God first, when you put God first, he's going to add everything else that you need unto him, unto you. I'm sorry. So. Like during this time, like I still, I have my moments, you know, with this relationship, but like, I still take the time to seek God. I still take the time to keep God first, you know, cause it's kind of like a long story with that too. But yeah, guys, it's going to be dark for a little bit. Cause I just turned off this light, but yeah, just be encouraged. God can do it. God can do it. Let me close this. Yeah, guys, just give me one second. I got to um, use the restroom real quick before I get on the road. Bear me a second, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. All right, y'all. Let's go. I had to use the restroom. Like I've been drinking a lot of water, so I've been using the bathroom a lot, you know? But let's go, y'all. I got my iPad. In like the last 30 minutes, because I want to try to keep these like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Like the last um, 30 minutes, we could just like do what we want to do. Miss Cheryl, how's your cooking coming along? What you cooking, Miss Cheryl? In the door, what are you going to be writing about in your um chapter for your book today? Amen. <laughs> yep. Let's get my key so I can get in my car. Oh, thank God I got my cover because like it's starting to get cold. It's starting to get pretty cold. Y'all, that's a dog somewhere in the backyard. Not our backyard, but somebody else's backyard. Make sure I lock the door. My cooking isn't going so well. Oh, Miss Cheryl, what happened? Like, Miss Cheryl, do you cook throughout just like for the whole week? Or do you cook um just like for like that meal? I'm going to write Thanksgiving dialogue, by the way. The characters. Oh, nice. I love that. Oh, cool. Adora, let us know how that turns out. That sounds so interesting. That sounds so interesting, y'all. Guys, I'm going to put y'all here real quick. No, probably four days a week I cook. Oh, that's good. 
Yeah, that's like my mom when she cook. She cook on um like she cook Sundays. She cook Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, nice, nice, Adora. Didi, what's something that you um you want to do for the holidays, Didi? And the other person on here, guys. Remember, there was a person on here this morning. They like they weren't saying anything. I hope they're not shy. But I hope you know. Do I really want to go this way? I'm gonna go this way. I don't know, but maybe they just want to be on. It's okay, fourth person. We love you. You know, it's okay if you don't want to say nothing, ma'am. I'm gonna need you to get out the road today. Thank you in Jesus' name. Good night. She's just looking like this road belongs to her, lady. Doing a lot, babes. Yeah, guys. I'm just gonna go where I could be close to go get some food once I'm done. Cause I'm not cooking and I don't want nothing out of the refrigerator. We've been I already had enough leftovers and stuff. I'm probably gonna get Burger King a checkers or something. Mm. Y'all see? How the traffic. And it'll feel good for me to like finally close this last um chapter because I've been trying to close this since last um last month. Like what had happened was hold on y'all. Because I'm trying to go out. One second, guys. Where's this person going? This is crazy. Come on, sir. I am not gonna wait for you today. I'm sorry, y'all. People be just. But what had happened was these books, like my first book is published. I started writing that book in the creative writing class. Like my teacher was like, um, we had to turn in something. And I used to like write poems and stuff and different things. And before the class, and she was like, um, she was like, you should be an author. And I was like, no, because I was so shy. Like, I just wanted to turn in my work and that's it and get a good grade and do that. So she was like, thank you, Adora. She was like, do you want to read your work in the um, in front of the class? Because I think like I was the only one, like the only persons, like me and two other people that got the concept of what she had told us to do. This is high school. And, um. She was like, you want to read it in front of the class? And I was like, no, you know, because I was so shy. Like, a lot of people were kind of, like, jealous, too. I just, I'm the type of person, I don't like unwanted attention. Like, the older that I got, the better that I got with that. And, like, that seed had never left me when she, you know, started talking about it. Like, I should do that. So, I already had my poems and stuff. And um, when I had moved into my first apartment, I was like 17. I wasn't saved, but all the signs were for me not to move in with this person that I had moved in with. I have no animosity towards her. You know, she's fine or whatever. But this was like, what, 12 years ago? Because I'm 29 now. So I had ended up moving in an apartment with her. Basically, like, my the boyfriend that I was with at the time, I guess he liked her. I don't know. And um, I ended up with him. She kept trying to like push me and him together, but I was getting like these weird vibes between them. And basically one day, like before I had went to work, I don't know if they thought I had left the apartment or whatever, but I didn't, I was in the bathroom. And when I left my room, he was still in my bed, you know, cause he had slept over, we were having sex or so, 17. And I wasn't where I am now, okay? So I'm just being honest with y'all. And um, I had left him there, you know, I was taking, a, um, taking the shower so I can go to work and when I came back because her and her boyfriend were in her room like she had the master bedroom and I just had like the regular bath like the bedroom in the bathroom or whatever and um, I'm telling y'all this for a reason how God can use even the ugly things and turn it for good so like um when I came out the shower which is like less than 10 minutes I had her be to work for 12 I had to work like a mid shift like 12 to 8 she's on top of my boyfriend and her boyfriend is next to her all three of them are in the bed and back, guys, I have a really bad temper. Like, not anymore. I'm much better with it. God has, like, really delivered me from that. But I'm telling you, I was, like, grabbing all types of scissors and knives and stuff. I was ready to throw, like, 
his watches and stuff in the pond and all this stuff it was super crazy like when i got off work it didn't really hit me like it hit me when i was going to work so i'm like opening up closets and stuff making noise nobody's saying anything they acting like they sleep and I'm like, how? And I just got in the shower less than 10 minutes ago. And I know he was asleep, but how you get on top of him with your shirt on and no panties and your boyfriend next to um him? It was super crazy, but I just went to work because I had my little sister there with me, so I didn't want to pop off. And like me and her, I thought we were better than that, but all the signs were telling me not to move in. Like all the money that I was working and getting, even the money we had to borrow to move in, all the signs were telling us not to move. And I had just wanted to be so grown and have my get out my mama's house, honey, and all that extra stupid stuff. Don't come out, sir. And I had went through that betrayal, whatever. And what happened was all those poems and things that I wrote, that betrayal had actually pushed out my first book. Like my characters, like Adrian, Mike, Cassandra, I just started seeing it. And God started birthing the book. And he was like, you need to listen to this creative writing um, teacher that was telling you about this gift. And so that, that they were trying to deny it, saying I was crazy, I was delusional, I was seeing stuff, whatever. I know what I saw. And um, after that, I ended up, like, she moved out first and moved back to where she was. And I ended up moving back with my mom. And that was a crazy period for me. But God had got me through it even when I didn't know him or really want him at that time. And we had went through that. So that had birthed the book. And now I'm on the third book. You know, like, it just birthed so many things. And, like, each book has um, seven chapters. So, so far, not seven chapters, seven stories. So it's kind of like seven books in one for one book. So kind of technically it's like I'm on my 21st book, but I'm not. The purpose of me writing the books that way was for people because I love to read. You know, sometimes like I, I just go to the library now and read books. But, you know, like when I used to buy people's books, sometimes I didn't have the money to buy a second series or a third series or see what was going on. So the Lord had told me uh, this was in 2007, like three years later, I kind of was sitting on it on the book. And like after I got saved, it's like um, and going through what I went through, it's like all my stuff start opening up, like all my stuff start opening up my businesses, excuse me, my book writing. It's like it had catapulted me in another level. And it was so crazy, guys. So from like 2010 to now, like God's been pushing me with these books, my business entrepreneurship, even though I have worked a lot over this time, I had a cleaning business as well. Um, the ministry, like he started using me like eight years ago, nine years ago, text message ministry, encouraging people. Then it went to email, then the YouTube two years ago. So he worked all that crazy stuff out as for a blessing. And it helped, you know, fuel my book writing and everything. And God bless them. Like I have nothing against none of them now. I hope they're all doing well. You know, we were younger or whatever, but God could take the crazy things and use it for your good. And like even my other ex I was with, like certain things I went through with him, yeah, my books are on my website. I have to get new ones in stock, but you can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Amazon.com. I'm going to come out and write a um, biography as well. It's called The Real Me, Really Than Ever Before. I had started writing it like four years ago. But, um, okay, thank you, Didi. But, yeah, so um, that book was written between, like, the poems 2007 and um, up. And then I, I was writing it 2010. It didn't get published until um, my first book didn't get published until 2014. So it was a process because I was sending out my manuscripts to different places. They were rejecting it. They were like, we want to, you know, grab hold of it. But the seven different stories that you have and they didn't get it or whatever. So that's when I was God told me about the create space, create space down the line. Like I had a book party for it at the hotel suite. It was nice, you know. We had like a book discussion, food. It was really nice. And then like my second book, I started writing that in 2011. And I didn't publish that until 2016. And now this book, I had started writing this book in 2014. And like the computer that I had, the USB that I had, my, my computer went out and my USB bent and it got messed up. So some of it, I had like a rough draft and some of it I had to kind of start over. And that's this book I'm working on now. And I had in mind that I wanted to publish one book every year. And I, I think after this year, I would try to start to do that. Because I have poems, devotionals, uh, short stories, different things like that. And, um, you know, so I, that's another reason why I want to get on this book. Because for the last 10 months, the Lord has been telling me to do this book. And I have done a lot towards it. But this has been one of my most 
difficult books to write because of the season that I've been in these last 10 months have been so pressing. But I'm trying to do that. And that's another purpose for this creative hour so that we can come together and do whatever we need to do. So like right now, see, like I got my iPad. Because I don't have my desktop anymore. And um, I don't have my laptop. But I have my iPad. And God is like, utilize what you have and just work. So I'm going to show y'all some of it. And I already got the cover for this. Um, I have the cover for it. Like the cover of how it's going to look. I just have to upload it. And I just got to finish working on it. So like for the last 20 minutes of our creative writing right now, <laughs> that's what I'm going to be working on. I can show y'all a little bit of it. I don't know if y'all could see. I've been working on this like the last 10 months. And like a lot of it is not done. Some of it is just rough draft. Some of it I got to edit. Some of it I got to add to. It looks short, but it's a lot. So I'm trying to finish working on this. Like my next story is going to be um, like an African Romeo and Juliet. This story I'm finishing out. Um, this one is going to be taking place in New York. It's called Fame Fighters. It's about two twin brothers um, that are very different, but they're the same. Um, and it just talks about their background with their family. Like one of them is engaged to a lawyer. The other one is um, had a rocky relationship. He's a boxer and she's a boxer. The other one is a painter. And then his girlfriend is a lawyer. And it just goes into like their childhood and what they went through and how they be there for each other and stuff. And like how they want to better their life and the different trials that they go through. Like right now I'm about to clear the last chapter with them. Um, it's called Honor in the Courtroom of My Heart. And it's like two years later, it passed. And it goes to where one of the girls is having a baby. And, you know, they got to kind of be there for each other. And, like, their dad passed. And, like, um, the dad was having sex with their mom and her sister. Because the sister couldn't have kids. So she gave one of the twins to her. And the sister ended up killing herself after the dad passed. Because it's like 25, 30 years of this going on. So a lot of these stories are very like real life. It's called untitled reality. Like some of the some of the parts in the stories, I use pieces of my story, but I don't say my name. I'll use another character or certain careers that I wanted to do. I'll let my character have it. Or certain things that I've been through, I'll let my character do it. Or certain things that if I could go back and do it, I'll let my character do that. So it's a lot of different characters, very graphic, very raw. Like anything that you could think of that we as human beings go through in this life is inside of this book. Is not your typical um, Christian book. But the thing that I like about these books is that God always, like, in these books, people always have a choice to either find God, follow him, or break away. Like, God is always in their situations working out their bad like he did with my situation and other situations. And I went through a lot of other situations besides the one with my ex-roommate that I was telling you about. I went through a lot. And I feel like a lot of the pain that I went through even that I'm not telling you guys right now, but a lot of that that I went through, God used to fuel passion and purpose. And that's what he's doing with a lot of you on here as well. Like he's using a lot of your pain to fuel passion and purpose. Like he's using like Romans 8 says, like he's working out everything together for your good. Like he's working out the good. He's working out the bad. He's working out everything, you know. So God is working it all out. And like I said, guys, one day we're going to have testimony service because I really didn't tell you guys a lot, lot that I went through, but we're going to have testimony service one day. I believe it'll bless a lot of people and you guys can share um, your testimonies too. I'm here, guys. I'm just um, like the last 15 minutes. I'm just going to work on, um, you know, adding to the scene, like the hospital scene. Miss Cheryl, how's the dinner? Did, did What happened with the dinner? Did it turn around? Didi, have you ever thought about writing the book, Didi, or writing the poem? And Adora, who's one of your favorite characters right now in your book? I'm here, guys. I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, you made sandwiches. Cool. You know, a sandwich I haven't had a long time is a manwich. I want to eat um, one of those. I haven't had that since like elementary or middle school. 
So Melinda's in the hospital room, balled up in the cover. Okay. My favorite character in my book is Cole Harris. Oh, okay, cool. You want to tell us a little bit about him or you want us to read about him? Cole Harris. That sounds like a very interesting name. I like that, Adora. Cole Harris. Okay, Cole Harris. He sounds like a fly guy. He seems like he's cool, like he's smooth. So, okay, Melinda is... He's so cool and fly. Yeah, he sound like it too. He sounds like it. He really does. So who had the baby once? Jasmine had the baby. Because I haven't worked on this since October 17th. But I'm getting better, guys. Like, the, I want to do with these creative hours, like, at least start our week off. Like, I'm going to post one once a week, one in the morning for our walks, for our exercise, and to start our week off. That'll be once a week until I move. And then, like, um, one of these are creative hours once a week to start. And on our next one, guys, I'm probably not going to talk as much. Like, I'll have some music in the background playing so that you guys are able to focus and do whatever it is that you guys need to do. But I hope that this creative hour, you know, is, is helping some of you on here so that we can kind of keep each other adamant. One of my girlfriends told me I needed to write because I write prayers a lot. Sometimes I send them out to those who need prayer. I also journal every day. Yeah, Miss Cheryl, I think you should write. I think that is a sign that you should write. You definitely should do it. And even as I was reading it, I was like, I was seeing that too. You probably have like a poem book and you are devotional. You know, you're like you send out prayers and stuff. You could write like a prayer book. Or have like a prayer journal. Miss Cheryl, are you going to uh, have like stuff on your YouTube channel? Like are you going to like have prayers on your YouTube channel? Or prayer time or journaling time? Because I would totally uh, subscribe to your channel. I'm subscribed to Adora's channel. And Didi, I'm going to subscribe to your channel. Miss Cheryl, yeah, if you do that, I would subscribe to your YouTube channel. I definitely would. That would be nice. Yeah, you should do that. That's a gift. And then, like, in this time that we're living in, a lot of people need that, you know? Like, writing prayers. Those prayers can help a lot of people, you know? You're welcome, Adora. And you're welcome, Miss Cheryl. And journaling every day is really good. I love journaling, too, because, like, you could write down something and come back to it. And, like, you could reflect, okay, this was where I was when I first wrote the journal entry, and now I'm here. Like, journaling is so helpful, and it'll help a lot of people. And another thing... Oh, <laughs> that's okay, Dee Dee. I'll still subscribe. But make sure, like, another thing you could do, like, Vistaprint. I use them for a lot. Um, you can go to Vistaprint. Like, they have, like, um, things that they can do custom-made stuff. You know, like, different places you can go, maybe go physically or online that you could put your logo on it and they send it to you or... You know, you could even probably get like some journals or put your logo on it or get some crafts and like go to the craft section or do something, you know, the Lord speaks to me through my writing. Yep, that's good. That's just like Isaiah and uh, Jeremiah, like they were writing a lot, you know, especially Jeremiah. He always was writing something that's really good. And like as he's speaking to you through, through writing, like God would use you to bless other people through your writing as well. You know, so I think you should do that. And another thing I was saying yesterday, and I told Adora about it, and uh, Didi too, I think you, I'm not sure if you remember, but yesterday when we were doing the live, um, I was telling you guys about createspace.com because that's what I use for, um, that's what I use for like my books. You can upload it yourself for do like expert. It's like, it's really good. It has like a lot of benefits. Like if you do music or film or DVD or writing, you could do that. And if you need help with it, um, Miss Cheryl, I'll help you. Just let me know. I'll help you with it. Because I have a business service that I do for that. But I'll help you with that. Like, for free. I'll, like, walk you through it. I'll be posting videos when I move into my own place. Adora Nice. And you know what's so funny? Like, yesterday when I was wiping down Justice Mickey Mouse table, like, after, like, before I got in the bed, I saw you, like, scrumming the guitar on the live. And then it went out. And I was like, what? 
And God was like, mm-hmm, it's coming. So I do see you posting videos when you move to your own place. And I'm going to be on your things, too. God knew, like, he, he just knows, like, what to do, you know? Didi, what are some things that you like to watch? Like, what are some things that interest you? Yes, Adora, I forgot to email you and tell you. Because yesterday, last night, I had went to bed, like, 9 o'clock. And I told y'all he had woke me up, like, 1. But I, I still was uh, real rested. Yep, I was cleaning just his little Mickey Mouse table with the white, like, making sure nothing was left on there. And I saw you, like, with this brown guitar, and you were scrumming, and you were on the live, and I was on your live. It's kind of like you were doing, like, acoustic, um, like, an acoustic session, and people were watching it. And then it went out. It was, like, five seconds, and it went out, and I forgot to tell you that. Oh, wow. See? Yep. And it was, like, like kind of like a white and like a grayish background behind you. I don't know like if you had like a gray bed or a gray couch. It was like a pretty charcoalish grayish color. Two guitar. Nice. Yep. I was, you was like doing a live. It was like a good acoustic live. So it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep, guys. And I'm probably going to um I'm probably close out in like 10 minutes. And I'm going to finish this part with Melinda in the hospital bed. But um, I know I'll be back on tomorrow, not a live. I probably won't do another live till next week. Like we won't do another uh, live for our creative um, hour or our um, walk hour. Excuse me, till next week. I'm going to try to get a, a good time for and date for us. But I'm going to definitely do it like mornings and um, um evenings well i better continue my guitar lessons then lol yes girl do it because i'm telling you i was tuned in and other people were tuned in as well they were tuned in so that'll be good and i'm so proud of you for doing that adora too yep and um i know i'll be back on on the first for live for the john series but i don't think i'll be back on for the live this week unless he lead me to come back on but i don't have any other things planned so the john series on november 1st and I'll upload the prayer for what we're going to have tomorrow night as on the replay. So that'll be good. But have you guys been enjoying, like, what's, like, some of the most... Diddy said, I like action, drama, comedy, and others. Nice. Diddy, have you ever thought about acting or, like, writing, a, like, a play script or a movie script? Like, writing a movie or a play? Have you ever thought about that? Or acting? I like action, drama, comedy, and others. I like putting on the play or something. No? Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. I'm here, y'all. I'm just... And I really appreciate y'all coming on, too, supporting. I love y'all so much. Y'all really help motivate me. Like, I know a lot of people email me and say, you're a blessing, you motivation to us. You bless so many people. I'm grateful for that. I give God all the glory. But really, y'all be inspiring me because it's like it, it it helps me to stay focused to do what God need me to do. And like it helps me. Oh, thank you. Like it helps me to just want to live my best. Like it's not easy. Sometimes I go through like little hiccups and I fall and stuff. But it's like for the most part, I try my best to like please God and submit to him and do my best because I know like it's not about me. Like other destiny is on the line as well. You know, so I hope this thing is not in my car. I don't feel like getting bit. So I'm just grateful for you guys to the subscribers. Like whether it was one subscriber or all the subscribers I have or even more that will come. I'm just grateful for you all because you all like help to motivate me. Like you motivate me inspire me to want to keep doing better and staying on the godly path because sometimes it's hard to stay on the narrow path a godly path but you know that's the best path for you like you know your life is better with god you know and he means so much to you you want to keep staying on that path you want to please him you want to be living your life on purpose you want to have his hand of blessing and protection over you like do you know how many people are out there that do not have the blessing and protection of God. It seems like they have everything else. But they don't have God's favor. They don't have God's protection. They don't have God's love. They don't even have peace. You know, we have peace. We have love. We have protection. We have blessings. We have favor. Did he say it is hard? Yeah, sometimes it's really hard. You know? Like with me, like one of my weaknesses was sex. 
like I had first I got am I being too graphic with y'all y'all know sometimes I could be raw if I am I'm sorry I'm so sorry guys I don't know like ever since Saturday live the Lord has had me being so much more transparent like transparent with you guys you guys notice that it's a lot different than the other videos that I usually post like sometimes I'm transparent with you guys but he has me like really transparent like the last three videos Thank you, Diddy. She said transparency is good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so like, okay, so we might as well talk, y'all. So like, um, my weakness was sex. My weakness was sex because I was open to it at a young age. And again, like with the father rejection wound thing, whatever. But um, like when I first got saved, well, first of all, what pushed me to get saved was an AIDS scare. Now, I don't want this live to be long. Because I told y'all I have a lot of stories that I could tell y'all about about me. But it was basically an AIDS scare. I didn't have it. What happened was my ex, not the one I was with for five years, the other one before him when I was not saved. Um, me and him were kind of like friends, like throughout middle school and high school. And he always liked me. Like he was like the class guy, but I didn't like him like that. And, like he would always try to like break up boys that I was with. Because I always had like a new boyfriend all the time. And he just was like, I thought he was overprotective, but it really was just like a spirit or whatever. It was a spirit on me too, because I wasn't saved. But anyway, like when he had got out of jail, we had ended up getting back together. Well, not back together. Like we ended up getting together. He was like, I like you. You know, you've been there for me, blah, blah, blah. And um, this is not my boyfriend that I'm with now. My boyfriend that I'm with now is the best and I love him. And I pray to God we get married in Jesus name one day. But this was like some years ago. So he had got out. And uh, we were together for like a couple of years and he used to always cheat on me. I used to always do so much for him, but cheating on me, he was not good for me. I knew it, but I had like really, really low self-esteem back then. And I just, I was taking a lot of stuff, but basically um, I had heard him on the phone. Like he had butt dialed me and he was like just bragging to his friends. Like, um, you know, he have me that does everything for him. And he got another girl in another state. And he was dog like dogging the girl and I wasn't even mad at the girl because I don't know her. I was like mad at him. And you can't be mad at the girl because who is the one time y'all in the middle anyway? You know, this is I'm not encouraging this guy. I'm just telling y'all part of my story or whatever. And um I had heard him everything he was saying for like 30 minutes. He was rambling. Because I had set it up on his phone where he will butt down me and I can hear what he's saying. And usually I just hang up. And um like something that night was like it was so loud and that night it was like don't hang up listen and I was listening and I heard it and God was trying to get my attention way before that um I had went through like so many different scares with him in and out the hospital abuse it was just so much and basically like I had finally like just going to kind of wanted to do what he did to me and I had ended up you know breaking up with him and being with someone else because I would break up with him but I would never do what he would do to me I would always just like be loyal to a fault because I'm the type of person like when I'm in a relationship if I'm with you I'm with you and when I'm not with you I'm not with you and that's how I am like it's no gray it's either black or white with me like either I'm all in or I'm not I don't know how to give halfway and so this time I was so pissed and like I went against my better judgment this is what woke me up to get saved and I end up sleeping around with someone that he knew. You too, Didi? Yeah. Like I end up sleeping around with someone that he knew, but I didn't know that they knew each other. And I had liked this guy. This guy was kind of like moving too. Like he was kind of like a street guy too or whatever. But my ex had came back when he found out I was sleeping with him. I guess they didn't like each other because street beef or whatever. But, and it wasn't really over me because I didn't have nothing to do with it. And I, I'm not into that stuff anyway. But, um, yeah, so... Yeah, crazy how life works. Yes. So he had found out that I had slept with a guy. And the thing is, like, the night me and the guy was supposed to go in a room, like, he was coming back from, like, they had went out of state to, you know what, or whatever. And he was coming back. And we were supposed to be in a room that night. And it's like it, the room got blocked. And, like, I was so persistent on spending the night with him. It's like the Lord was trying to cover me then. I didn't even see it. I was so blind. And, like, when we were, like, beginning to do it, I hope I'm not talking too much to y'all. I don't even know why I'm going here. This is creative hour, but the Lord is just having me share. I don't know. Maybe someone needs to hear it. And, um, yeah, so, like, he just kept stopping and looking at me. And he just kept saying, I can't do this to you. And I was like, what you mean you can't do it to me? Because I know I looked it good. I was feeling myself, you know. And he was like, I just can't do this to you. 
And like every time we would stop, it would start. And like start, it would stop. And basically, like we didn't even really do it. The night didn't go how I wanted to go. The next morning, I got up and got dressed. And like it was the 4th of July the next day. I went to a pool party because I used to go out a lot and really like be living a different kind of life, y'all. And um, my niece was being born that day. Um, and like we kind of didn't really talk after that. And then like after my ex was like, he was blowing me up for like the last couple of weeks. I wasn't really worried about it. And like, um, I don't know, like he found out who the guy was and that I like slept with him. But I really didn't even really sleep with him like that. But I kind of like did. And he was like, oh, you know, his um, his BM is out there, you know, and she got that stuff. And he was like, he still mess with her. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, he was like, so if she got it and he, he got it. You got it. So I had called him up because I was really scared. Like I was kind of. I'm not going to say I'm like a whore, but I was kind of out of like, I was the type of girl, like if I like you, or I'm with you and we talking or we're in a relationship, I would like open up myself to you again because of the father issues and self-esteem and not really knowing my identity and feeling like giving myself away was love, but it wasn't. I learned that or whatever. And um, basically I was scared about that to get tested because I, I, was, I was just saying, I was like, God, if I do have HIV or AIDS, you know, I don't know how I'm going to live with it. And I know there's a lot of people that live with that, you know, God bless them and heal them and stuff like that. But during this time and like my 20 year old mind, I was like, but behind that, I got checked. And my thing that I told God, you know, like when you be telling God stuff like, oh, God, if you get me out of this situation, like if the police come behind your car, like there are situations like police come behind the car, and stuff is in the car and you like, oh, God, I can't go to jail because of this person I'm with. If you get us out of here, blah, 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 all this stuff, we'll be telling God, you know, all this crazy stuff. I could tell y'all some more, but I'm not. But basically, I told God, this is how I got saved. I told God, I said, God, I said, I know I've been out there, you know, with a lot of people. And relationship or not, it just, I was living a very fast life. And I said, God, if you could just heal me. I said, if I do have it, please heal me. I said, and I, I don't even know why I said this, but I told God this, y'all. I told God, I said, God, if you deliver me from this and you heal me from this and I don't have it, I said, I will not go back to this person. I will leave this lifestyle alone. I will slow down. I said, I will finally be going to church for real and not just praying to you when I'm in trouble or need something. I said, and God, I will, I don't know why I said this, but I said, God, I will not have sex until I am married. And guys, back then I went thinking like when I was 20, like nine years ago, I went think about being married. I didn't want to be married because I was scared of it. And I was like, I don't, I didn't even want to have kids. Like the miscarriages and different things. I was like, I didn't even, I was so, I didn't want to go through, I didn't want to raise kids to go through what some of the stuff I had to go through in my childhood. Even though I kind of went through some things in my childhood, I'm grateful for my, um, you know, my mom and like my grandparents that pretty much raised me. But I just, I just didn't want to go, I just didn't want to bring a child into this world and know I wasn't ready. So I ended up losing the child that I had from this person. The results came back. I didn't have anything. And I'm like, I don't have nothing. He was like, you don't have it. He was like, you have, um, I had something. He was like, you got to clear it up with a pill. It was something simple. But I was like, out of all the things that I did, I'm talking about some things that I did, did. I said, that's all I had. And I said, God, I know you real. Because I was calling out to God for like a week. Like the results didn't come back for like a week. This was like back in 2010. And then, like, I got, like, after the results came back, clear, because, like, I was going to church, but I was in and out of church. Like, I was looking at a lot of church people that I, I saw as hypocritical. Like, it was a few church people in my life that would send me the word, the devotionals, and speak encouragement over me and to be telling me random stuff. And I'm like, how do you know that? And they would just be prophesying over me. And I didn't want to hear it at the time, but, like, their fruit, their words actually manifested, because you can see where my life is now. It's a lot better. And, um... I don't know, but like, like I remember when I had went to church that summer because I got saved in October. I had actually got saved in 2009, but I was in a backsliding state, so I don't count that. I just count 2010 or whatever. And like I had remembered how one of the um, pastors and the preachers was like, you got to cry out like Hezekiah when he faced the wall. And I was like, what are these people talking about? what wall what you mean crying out i'm not gonna be crying i'm tired of crying 
And the Lord had took me to that verse in my private time where I was going through all this mentally because I was so like jacked up. And I read about when Hezekiah, like when the Isaiah had told him, you know, you have um, get your house in order. You know, the Lord is getting ready to, you know, shift. And he cried out to God. And like before Isaiah got out to the courtyard or the yard, he had to turn around and say, you know, tell him I, I have heard his prayer. I'm going to heal him and I'm going to add 15 years into his life. So I was standing on that. And I was like, God, I don't know how to cry out. Like the people are telling me to cry, but I'm crying. And I was literally just crying and just crying out in my room. Like I wasn't going out how I was going out. I wasn't answering the phone how I was answering the phone. I was staying right in the house, which I'm a homebody anyway, but I'm better with it. And I was literally like in my Bible praying for real, for real. Cause I'm like, that's a life or death situation. And I'm like, I'm 20 years old. And I'm like, God, I know I did a lot of stuff. But God, I cannot, I just, I was like, God, uh, uh please shift this for me. And he did. And like, when I got the results back, I was happy. And I was going to call my ex so we could like link up. And you know, that voice said, this, the voice that I wasn't even saved yet. This is like three weeks before I got saved. And the voice said to me, remember your promise to me. I looked out for you, now look out for me. And like, after that, I like kind of stopped being around my ex. I got more into church. I started changing the way that I viewed things, the music I listened to, the way I dress. I started really like learning God for myself and not viewing him as this angry, mean God or, you know, like an absentee father or rejection or being hypocritical. You know, I wasn't viewing him as being judgmental and punishing me. And I started seeing him, you know, his love. And like for the first two and a half years, I waited for who he had for me. I didn't know this person from Adam. God would just show me things about him. And he did end up coming down here or whatever, but we didn't link. That's a long story, but kind of because of me. But like for two and a half years, I didn't do anything. And then my ex that I told you I was with for like five and a half years, uh, I ended up doing something with him. And that opened a major door that it wasn't supposed to because I went on like a five and a half year off and on spiral up and down with him or whatever like I would be celibate and I'll stop and I'll be celibate and I'll stop and then like now like um February of next year it's going to be two years I've been back celibate so I've just been doing my best to honor like my vows to God and what I'm telling him and it's kind of hard sometimes you know like with my uh, my boyfriend my situation you know but God is good like it doesn't mean I'm not human and I don't have needs and I don't want it it's just I'm doing my best to honor God, you know. Guys, did I tell too much? Did I talk too much? Y'all think I should even leave this live up? Or should I delete it? Did I did I tell y'all too much? Even though that's not a lot of my story, but did I tell y'all too much with that? Basically, I guess I just was kind of encouraging. Thank you, Adora. I just kind of was, like, encouraging someone. Like, it's not in vain what you're going through. Like, the, this, this narrow path, even Jesus told us in the Bible, like, it's not easy. It's hard, but it's worth it. It's narrow. There's few people on this path that we're on. And he said the the broad path that leads. Thank you, Diddy. The broad path that, you know, leads to hell is open. It's wide. There's a lot of people on there, but it's leading to destruction. So there are going to be some things that we have to go through, guys. I'm sure you guys have your own story and testimony that we got to go through that's uncomfortable, but it's going to be worth it. You know, God, like, you know keeps me pure keeping me pure and it's hard sometimes like even i used to struggle real bad with like lust and masturbation masturbation guys i'm being so raw right now my god but the lord like delivered me from that and helping me with that too because you know i know some people say oh it's, it's better to do that than go out and do whatever but it's like all purity is good in god's eyes so he had like helped me with that too you are right. I often wonder if something is wrong with me. My circle is small. <laughs> Miss Cheryl, no. Nothing is wrong with you. Our circle is small for a reason. Like, everybody's not meant to come. And that's a word that, well, I can share it with y'all while y'all are on the live. But, like, the word for the daily devotional is tomorrow. That's the part in there talking about everybody's not meant to come. You know, for those on the list, you know, you guys will get it. But it's like, um, everybody's not meant to come. That's on there. Like, Abraham wasn't meant to bring Lot. And he came and like it was saying, like, God has showed me for someone on that's going to read the list on tomorrow. Like, we got our songs, we got our scripture, we got our morning decree for tomorrow. And then we have um, 
that word he had kept me inserted at the, at the bottom, like God had called Abraham out of his father's household for a reason. And he didn't tell him to bring Lot. You know, he didn't tell him to bring him. And then I gave them scripture reference for whoever that's for him tomorrow. I don't even know. But everybody's not meant to come with us. Everybody is just not meant. There are some people that are meant. And I often talk about this in the videos. Like there are some people that are meant to be there for us for a season. There are some people that is just for a season. There are some people that's for a lifetime. And then there's some people for a season. Then the Lord, you know, separates you for a season. And then he may bring you back. So it just depends, you know. I have a very small circle too. Like I have you guys. I have a um a close friend that I speak with. She's more like a sister to me. We've been knowing each other like seven years. And people that I minister to, and like some people in my life that I've known from childhood, some of them or you know, high school, I'm close with some of them, but I'm very reserved on what I share with people. I'm very like I'm telling y'all very reserved. So I'm being transparent with you guys because this is the channel and, you know, y'all are like my YouTube family too. And I have to be transparent. Like y'all said, transparency is good. But my circle is very small too. Like I'm, my circle is small. It's kind of like I am my best friend. God is my best friend. You guys, you know, and those that I'm close and really, really close and connected with. But those are people that are like in the Lord and they own the right path and they trying, like I'm trying and we can help encourage each other. I'm often close to mighty woman of God. Yeah, that's a good thing, Miss Cheryl. Like, it's like he sends us people along our path that will help us. And also that we help too, you know? Did he say I'm very reserved too? Yes, I'm very reserved. Like, I'm the type of person, like, I'm like more of an introvert. Like, it, it, like once you get to know me, you'll know all sides of me and I'll open up to you, you know? But I'm very reserved. <laughs> I just want to come be your friend. Uh, uh I don't know you like that, but like if the Lord lead me to you or you to me, that's a different story. But I've always had like a small circle, a closed in circle. You know. I always had that. So I just always been like that. I don't want to say a loner, but I mean if the shoe fits. But what are some things, guys, that y'all have gone through? Like, I told y'all a few of my stories, and it's a lot more where that came from. But, and thank God I'm not where I used to be, y'all. Because I'm telling y'all, from eight, nine years ago, if I wouldn't have made that decision, I don't know how my life would have been. I probably really, really, really would have been out there. I think I would have been either in the script club, dead, in jail, or like really, really out there, probably even on drugs. So I would have really, really been out there because the crowds that I was hanging around was not a joke. Nothing but death surrounded them. Not all of them, you know, but the a lot of the crowds that I was with that the Lord had to get me away from. I'm just grateful for God's grace and mercy. Like what are some, like some stories that, you know, y'all went through or some things that God really turned your life around. Or some situations where you're like, wow, that was a really close call. And the Lord changed that around for me. If you want to share, you can. What are some things? I'm here, guys. I'm just waiting to see if um, you guys are going to share um, any, like, of your stories at certain times where it might have been a close call for you or something that you're grateful that the Lord um, delivered you from or did for you. Excuse me. That's the train, y'all. The bright line is going to be gone fast.
Miss Cheryl said, I was a single parent raising four kids alone for many years. It took me from 1994 to 2014 to obtain my bachelor's degree. Then I received my master's in 2016. Oh, my God, Miss Cheryl. God bless you. We are so proud of you. And may God bless you for all those years that you raised your kids. You know, that is a blessing that you went for your bachelor's and then you got your master's. Isn't that amazing, guys? It was a long road, but I did it by the grace of God. Amen. Oh, my God. And your kids are going to be able to live a blessed life in a full life because of your sacrifice, Miss Cheryl. That is a blessing. And then that degree, like, you know, that's really good to have that degree. Because you can do a lot in your field with that, you know, and have that under your belt. God is like, that's just like proving the faithfulness of God, you know. God carried you through. So it's like, if God could carry us through that, through what we go through, it's like, you know, he has more for us. Like he has, he's like, okay, if I can carry you through that, I can carry you through what you're going through. And I'm going to carry you to a greater land. Because, you know, I never really thought about this, but Holy Spirit just downloaded this. Like some of the things that some of us are going through right now, we may not be exactly where we want to want to be. Like I'm saying for me too, but it's better than where we were in the last season or it's better than where we were some years ago or some months ago. You know, and it's like the Lord is like, there was a time where we prayed for this land or this blessing that we have right now. And God did it and put us here where we are or manifested certain things for us so then it's like okay so from where you are right now i can take you to a new land i can also fulfill more promises to you like it's we're going from level to level faith to faith and glory to glory michelle said i have a testimony it hasn't been easy amen miss yes you do miss Cheryl. you have a testimony for your youtube channel i will definitely go on and subscribe i will subscribe because i believe your testimony will bless a lot of women a lot of people period but a lot of women I believe it will really bless a lot of women. That song, when you were just sharing your testimony, that song by Corinne Hawthorne, that's her name, Won't He Do It? That song just came to my mind because he will do it. God is so faithful. Sometimes I just look at God and I'm like, God, you really are not like man. Like, you don't get exhausted, you don't get tired. You love to do things for your children. You love to bless us. Like you love to be in our life. Like you love to just show yourself strong and get the glory. You know, my favorite. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that song, Won't He Do It? That is a like, that song right there, that's like one of my anthems. He will do it in the midst of the enemies, in the midst of the naysayers, in the midst of those that say we don't deserve it, God will still do it. He will raise us up just like he did David and Joseph in the Bible. He'll do it. He will do it. Guys, I can't wait for us to have our girls night. I mean, guys could join, like they could be grooming themselves, but we're going to have like a girls night when I move. Like I'm going to set up like our little apple cider, a little ice cream and some food. You could be watching a movie or even it could be like we could like all read a book or read something or get an article or a, discuss a show or something or a topic we want to talk about that night and have a girls night. And just talk about uh, have girls night doing that. We can do our nails. We can do facials on the live. We can do like, you know, whatever you want to do. Just relax and have like a little girl's time. Maybe even like light some candles or do like some um, oils or bubble bath or something. I think that'll be so nice. And I cannot wait to do that. Because that's stuff I used to do when I was at my place. But I know God has more things for me to do in my new place. So I'm happy about that, y'all. Yeah, I'm so happy about that. Adora, did you get a chance to write what's your book? And Miss Cheryl, how was the sandwich? Didi, what did you eat for tonight? Or what you gonna have for dinner tonight, Didi? Oh, okay, cool, Adora.
<laughs> My sandwich was good. That's good. That's pretty good. Well, guys, before we close out, I hope that this creative hour was good. I know I talked a lot. Like on our next one next week, I'm not going to talk so much. <laughs> I'm not going to talk so much. I'm just going to have like some music in the background. I may talk a little bit, but I have some music in the back so that we can focus more. DD fasted for three days. Amen. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, whatever she's believing you for over these next three days with this fast, I thank you that you are going to accelerate it and you are going to make it evident in her life and you are going to speed it up in her life, Father God. We are touching in the green with DD for this fast, Father God. Bless her prayers. Bless her fast. Bless her place and worship to you. Bless everything she's doing, Father God, over these next three days. Blow her mind supernaturally and naturally, Lord. We thank you that it is blessed and favored god in jesus name amen prophet jolene whitaker has been uh releasing a lot of uh powerful words i've been following her ministry since like maybe march or may of this year one of those but she's been a blessing in my life and um she's been releasing like a lot of um powerful words she's on instagram and youtube periscope so if you guys haven't checked her out um check her out amen miss cheryl amen Did I get um because the fasting brings with so like so many results, it brings so many great results, you know. Yes, I follow her. Yes, yeah, she's been saying a lot of um powerful stuff. Like she always says powerful stuff, but like the last couple of days, she's been saying like a lot of um powerful things that the Lord has been showing her, releasing a lot of prophetic decrees. I have been immensely blessed. I have just been so blessed, guys. What's her name again? It's Prophet Jolene Whitaker. If you um YouTube her, she'll come up. Prophet Jolene Whitaker. She's on Instagram too. She'd be posting a lot of prophetic decrees on there too. But Prophet Jolene Whitaker, she is like really a blessing. I hope that this came out. Well, guys, I love you guys. I'm going to get off of here. Miss Cheryl, don't forget to email me so I can send you the devotionals. Lovekira243 at yahoo.com. Love, K-E-R-A-243 at yahoo.com. Because I think one person had put K-I-R-A. And I was like, no, it was K-E-R-A because I would have sent it to you. <laughs> but, you know, so Adora, thank you for the hearts. I've sent so much love back to you too, sis. But I love you guys. I'm going to be on tomorrow, not on live. I'm going to be on what the replay may be. And then I'll be on live with the um, John series. Thank you, Miss Cher. I love you guys. And next week, guys, we're going to have more, um, more music. <laughs> so I love you guys. Didi, God bless you. Have a great night, sweet dreams. Enjoy this beautiful night. Miss Cheryl, God bless you. Sweet dreams to you. I mean, really great downloads to your portion. And have a blessed night in the door. I love you. I love you guys. You guys have a great night. Sweet dreams, Adora. And those that were catching us on the replay. I love you guys. I will see y'all in the next video. I don't want to close out, but I don't want it to be so long. You know, and I know y'all have things y'all have to do too. Because I could just sit up here all night with y'all. But I don't want it to be so long. You know, I want to be sensitive to you guys' time. But I love you guys. I'll see y'all next week for our creative hour. But I will see you guys this week as well for the other videos. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Bye.